Hello, welcome to Leading Lights. I'm Greg Donaldson. Have you heard the new song called The Blessing? It's beautiful and wonderfully during this lockdown time, many different churches and nations have got together remotely, sung the song and clever people have mixed it together and formed a virtual choir singing The Blessing. What a wonderful song. The words of the song go like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence Go before you, behind you, beside you, all around you, and within you. He is with you. He is with you. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, He is for you. He is for you. It is the most beautiful song. And today I want to talk about the story behind the blessing, because it comes straight out of Scripture in Numbers chapter 6. The Lord told Moses to command Aaron and the priests in this way. It says in verse 22, And the Lord said to Moses, spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons. Aaron and his sons were the priests who ministered in the tabernacle, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. So Aaron and his sons were commanded to speak a blessing and God gave them the words that they should say. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Wow, what an amazing promise. God says, I, the creator of the universe, the one who speaks and universes are created, the one who can change anything in an instant, the almighty God, God says, I will put my name upon them, which means in the spiritual realm, those who have this blessing on them walk around with God's name written on them and all the spiritual forces can see that one belongs to God. And I, God says, will bless them. Bless them. What is a blessing? A blessing is a word spoken by someone who has the authority to speak it that causes power and supernatural release of God's presence and his blessing to come into a person's life and on a person's life. Imagine that. Imagine you could have a name or a mark written on you and a blessing put upon you that meant wherever you went, God's power was with you, his presence, his protection, his favor. He says, this one's mine. I am with them. I am for them. They represent me and I speak for them. That is the power of a blessing. And in the Bible, God commands people in authority to speak. It has to be voice activated to speak a blessing over their children, over their countries, over various situations. When we speak a blessing, amazing things happen. And God commanded Aaron and the priests to speak this. And most Bible scholars believe that they did this every single day. In the morning, they would speak this blessing over the people. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Can you imagine the smiling face of God? Uh, be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his countenance upon you, towards you, and give you peace. What an amazing blessing. The opposite of blessing is cursing, where after sin entered the world, that same power that humans had to speak God's blessing was perverted by the devil so that when those in authority speak negative words, they have the power to curse. And so we see throughout the Old Testament uh, curses being spoken against people, um, evil people using the power of words to, to bring a curse 
upon someone. I grew up in Africa and many, many people believe in curses there and I have seen it happen. There was a man who came into our church. He had lost all his hair and his daughter had been paralyzed. And I said to him, man, what a terrible situation. He said, somebody put a curse on me. They paid a witch doctor and they put a curse on me. We prayed with that man. One of my friends, an elder in our church, Stuart, walked into that man's house, told the gospel to the girl who was sitting paralyzed in her wheelchair. He just said, Jesus died for you. He died to break the curse and to set you free from every curse. Galatians 3 verse 13. Galatians 3 13 says, Jesus became a curse for us because it is written, cursed is everyone who is hang on a tree so that we might be free from the curse of the law and receive the blessing of Abraham. This friend of mine, Stuart, told that story to this girl. She believed and she immediately was healed of being paralyzed. She got up out of her chair. The man, his hair grew back because Jesus took all the curses that Every evil person, including the devil, could speak against us. Jesus took it all. That's why he died such a death on the cross. And he enabled us to receive blessing. And if there's only one thing you remember today, I want to tell you, Jesus bought you the blessings of God, the blessings of God, the spoken blessings of God. Proverbs 26 verse 2 says, like a flittering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse cannot come to rest. Friend, I want to tell you, you don't deserve any curse. It doesn't matter what anyone has spoken against you. It doesn't matter what that authority figure said. It doesn't matter if there were a thousand witch doctors paid to curse you. The power of Jesus' blood is stronger. The power of God's blessing is stronger. Jesus took that curse and now it's an undeserved curse. It cannot come to rest on you because you are blessed. You are blessed. But now I want to tell you the story behind the blessing. Now, the song, The Blessing, was written and sung by Carrie Job and her husband and the Elevation Worship Church team. And it's been wonderful. It's just blessed the world because so many people are singing it. Can you imagine in the spiritual realm, the ripple effect of all these people singing and speaking this blessing over their countries, over their families? It's just wonderful. That's the story behind the song, the recent song, The Blessing. But I want to tell you the story behind The Blessing in Numbers chapter 6. It starts just a few months before. The Israelites have come out of Egypt, slavery, where for hundreds of years they were kept in bondage. They were forced to do manual labor. They were tortured. Their children were killed. They were set free miraculously by God. They went through the Red Sea and the armies of Egypt were drowned in the Red Sea. They wandered in the desert for a few weeks. Eventually they came to Mount Sinai and God called Moses up to the top of the mountain. There was thunder and earthquakes and lightning and God gave the Ten Commandments. And as Moses is coming back down from being with God for 40 days, getting the Ten Commandments, as he's coming back down the mountain, the people in 40 days have forgotten They've convinced Aaron, Moses' brother, to melt all of their gold jewelry that they took from Egypt as plunder. As they left Egypt, God made all the Egyptians give them all their jewelry and all their wealth. And so they had all this gold and they melted it down. It's hard to imagine this, but it's true. They melted it down. They made a golden idol, an image of a calf, a baby cow, and they started worshiping it. They started dancing and singing and saying, this is our God. And as Moses is coming down from the mountain, he hears the sound and his assistant says, look, there's, uh, there's happiness. And he says, no, no, there's something wrong. And he gets there and he sees them worshiping this calf. He is so angry. He throws the Ten Commandment stone tablets on the ground. They are shattered. And then he goes before God and he speaks to God. He says, please, please, God. God says, I'm not going to go with this people anymore because I, I'm going to destroy them. You go ahead with this people, but I'm not going with you anymore. And in Exodus chapter 33, it came to pass, verse 9, when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. 
all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door and all the people rose and worshiped each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. This word face is very important. Please just note it as I read the story. But God spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. There was this closeness and this intimacy. And Moses would go into God's presence. This cloud of God's power would rest over the tabernacle. Moses would speak. And he said to God, Now therefore I pray, God, if I have found grace in your sight. Grace means kindness, favor, forgiveness, blessing. If, if you love me, God, if I found grace, if I found blessing and favor from you, now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. Interesting that God can have given us grace, but if we don't know and understand what he's given us, we don't experience that grace. Moses says, God, if I found grace in your sight, teach me your way that I may know you that um, I may find grace in your sight, that I may find this grace that you've already given me. Friend, Jesus bought the grace and the blessing of God for the whole world, the Bible says. He paid for the sins of the whole world. But if you don't know him, and if you don't understand what he's bought for you and what he's got for you, you don't find that grace. You don't experience it, even though God has already bought it. And today, I'm praying that all of us understand and get it. He says, and consider that this, your, this nation is your people. And God said, my presence will go with you. God relented. God listened to Moses. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Now, remember, this is just a few months before that blessing from Numbers chapter 6 that we sing in the song and that I've already read to you. This is the context behind it. This terrible sin of the Israelites, Moses pleading, God says, yes, okay, my presence will, my presence. And that word presence is the same word as face. It's the Hebrew word panim, and it means face. So whenever God says, my presence will go with you, he's saying, my face will go with you. And I will give you rest. Then he said to him, so Moses then says, if your presence, if your face does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. He's saying, Lord, thank you for saying this, but I just want to reiterate to you that we need your presence. It's not enough just for us to know about you, to know you from a distance, to know you from a past time. We need your presence. We need you, your face right near us every single day. For how then will it be known that your People and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us. It's not enough to have a historical knowledge or experience of God. We must have God with us. Amen. So we shall be separate, separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, please show me your glory. <laughs> please show me your glory. Lord, I want to see more of you. I want to see your face. I want to see your beauty. I want to see who you are. Then God said, I will make all my goodness. Remember this word blessing, God's goodness, his favor. He's with you. He's for you. I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord, Yahweh. That, that word Lord in the Bible, capital L-O-R-D, is, is the word Yahweh in the Hebrew. I will proclaim the name. I'll let my goodness pass before you and the name of the Lord will be proclaimed. You see, understanding the name of the Lord, not just the word Yahweh, but what it means in Exodus 3. Moses says to God, what is your name? And he says, it's Yahweh, I am that I am. I am, not I will be, not I was, I always am. And I am all these different things. And then he added all these names to this word Yahweh throughout the Old Testament. He says, 
I am the Lord, your righteousness, the Lord, your banner, the Lord who is there, the Lord, your healer, the Lord, your provider, the Lord, your shepherd. In the New Testament, Jesus said, I am. And he used a very similar phrase in the Greek language, ego I me, which is an unusual phrase. I am that I am. And he said, before Abraham was, I am. This is Jesus speaking. And then he said, I am the bread of life. I am the vine. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. And Jesus and the Father in the Old Testament both used this name, I am, uh, to give us a knowledge of the grace that God has given us. And so God says, when Moses says, Lord, show me your way, show me your glory, God says, I'll let my goodness pass before you. You'll sense my presence. But also I will say my name so that you may know and understand what this blessing means for you. And then he says, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And then the very next chapter, 34 of Exodus, verse 5. This is the fulfillment of this promise when God now shows his glory to Moses. Verse 5. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord Yahweh. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed. Wow. Can you imagine Moses hearing God's name and sensing God's presence? And this is what God said. The Lord, the Lord God, Yahweh, Yahweh, merciful, gracious, long-suffering. This is his name he's proclaiming. Abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands. And many translations say thousands of generations. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. That was the name that God told Moses. And now skip forward a few months. And in Numbers chapter six, God says, Moses, tell Aaron to speak to the children of Israel and to say this blessing to them every single day. And this was it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And I'm going to Mention that in a moment. His presence, his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you, kind to you. The Lord lift up his countenance, his face upon you and give you peace. That's the result of having this blessing. I'm held by the father of all creation. I'm loved by him. And it's not because I've been good. He has made me good by the blood of Jesus washing me clean. I rest in his presence. There's nothing I can do to make him love me any less. There's nothing I can do to jump out of this presence unless I really, really try hard. And even then it's almost impossible. But I'm held by the king of all creation. Then I get peace. And then he says, so shall they put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. Now, let me just speak about the shining face. He says, the Lord make his face shine upon you. You see, when Moses went into God's presence to speak to him face to face, he would come out and his face, Moses's face was shining like God's. The glory and the presence of God, the blessing of God made Moses's face shine. And the Old Testament says that Moses would put a veil over his face to cover the shining and In the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it explains that the shining glory on Moses' face was diminishing. So every day he would go into God's presence. He would come out and his face was beaming, shining with a supernatural light. The presence of God was upon him, the glory, the blessing. He's shining God to everyone. But he puts a veil because he knows that throughout the day, that shining face gets less and less glorious. But in 2 Corinthians 3, it says we have God's glory on the inside of us. It doesn't get less. It gets more. It's not fading away. Let me read you what it says. Verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. We speak boldly with blessings. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face 
so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is the Spirit of the Lord in you, and there is liberty. But we all, that's you and I, who've received this extra blessing of Jesus, He's taken all the curses, He's put His Spirit inside of us. It says, we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Friend, when you receive God's blessing, when you hear His name, when you understand what His intentions are towards you and the grace that He's poured out on you, when you understand Jesus took the curse and put the blessing upon you, when you have His Spirit within you, we gaze on His glory as in a mirror because His Spirit is in us. We see His glory and that glory is in us. And it says we are changed into that same image from glory to glory, ever increasing glory, other translations say. That is the story behind the blessing. The blessing came out of Moses making mistakes and the children of Israel making mistakes. Moses pleading for them, God having grace upon them and God saying, now my blessings with you, my presence is with you, my face is with you, I'm going with you. And then in number six, they are told the blessing of God every single day. And Aaron and the priest pronounce it. They are blessed, but then they had to move forward out of the wilderness and go into the promised land. A few chapters later, Numbers 13, they failed to enter the promised land. And for 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness. And I want to now just say that you and I are in a similar position to the Israelites. Friends, we have had better blessings. Jesus has died for us, bought our blessings, taken the curse, set us free. But now he says, I've got a blessing for you, but I've got a work for you to do. You have been in captivity, locked down. The Israelites were years in Egypt and uh, then a couple of years getting to Mount Sinai before they were sent off with God's blessing. You and I have been in lockdown uh, because of coronavirus for 12 weeks. And in that time, we've had some failures and some weaknesses. I know many of us uh, have felt very vulnerable and very weak at this time. We've failed in various areas. Maybe you've been lazy. Maybe you've put on weight. Maybe you've failed in your communications with family members. Uh, Maybe you've sinned and you feel like, oh, this is terrible. Or else we've learned some lessons. We've learned some things that we must value in this time of lockdown. I don't know about you, but I've learned a few things. I've learned the value of rest, the value of making space in my calendar to just be with the Lord, be with the people I love and not have lots and lots of appointments planned out. I've been very, very busy, but it's been a different kind of busyness. It's been a restful busyness with God's presence upon me. Many of us have learned the value of exercise, We've had to do walks every day. Many of us have learned the value of um, being able to communicate in different ways. You know, the Zoom groups that have blossomed in our church and many other places around the world. We've seen that we can have small groups and prayer and discussion and fellowship and love over the Internet with people in other countries. We've had some wonderful fellowship with people from all over the world in our Zoom groups. We've learned the value of hairdressers, amen, and how much we need them, and nurses and cleaning people. We've learned that it's not always the the fancy, high-paid celebrities who are the important people in the world. Hairdressers, man, we need them. People who clean things and nursing staff, wow, amazing, amazing people. We've learned some wonderful lessons, but I want to say that now we are like the Israelites. This blessing is pronounced upon you and me. We've learned some lessons, but now it's time to pack up our stuff and to start 
moving forward. God said to the Israelites, you've been going around this mountain long enough. Let's move on. Let's get going. There's a place for you to go. There are promises for you to inherit. There are giants for you to overcome. There is a world and a, and a land, a promised land for you to occupy. God has a job for us to do. Friends, let's thank God. Thank God for what we've experienced, for what we've learned, for the blessings, the protection, the fact that many people in our church have had coronavirus and recovered, the fact that in Jersey, we only have two active cases of coronavirus, two in the whole island. The fact that things are opening up, that we can meet together again, and the fact that God has great, great things in store for us. Father God, I thank you for your blessing, and I speak your blessing right now over myself, over my family, and over our church, and everyone who's listening to me. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face, his presence, his power shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you, towards you, and give you peace. He is with you. He is for you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping, in your rejoicing. He is with you and your children and a thousand generations. God is with us. Hallelujah. God has always cared about the whole world. I have raised you up for this very purpose, that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. I have made you a light for the nations, that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Visit leadinglightsnetwork.com or download the Leading Lights app from any app store.